today. Our first hero will be uh, Luizin Malman in force. He is representing Germany today. Um, Luizin, are you here today? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, um, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, I'm representing more than Germany. I'm representing today Albania. Awesome. So that's why, I'm, because I'm also by myself, you know, from Albania, even though I have studied and done my, my master's and all my specialization in Germany. I am an environmental engineer specialized in waste management. But uh, because I have been living along the most, one of the most polluted river in Albania, I wanted to go a bit more than just waste management. And then I started to, to deal with the most polluted river in Albania, which is called Ishmi River. At least two and a half years from now, I have been working really many, many hours and days. And, and there was, it was really a very active time. And still, I'm working in a current project on the topic. As you see at the source, Ishmi River, as many other rivers, maybe all our other rivers are as, as clean as on, on this picture. But as soon as the river leaves uh, the, first, the first houses, it gets as polluted as on this picture and also some other pictures that you are going to see. Uh, I'm going to speak, the this is very, very short table of content, pollution, just around the, the problem. Yeah, it's basically, it seems like the problem is almost everywhere the same. It's a problem. You have to solve it, maybe different solutions. And that's why I'm going, I'm going to come up also with uh, like water analysis, how polluted is this river? Very short and then five projects proposed and the current campaign, which I am already doing in Albania, like fighting to clean this, this river. Very short, Albania is a country in South, Southern Europe, has actually it's a small country, has only 2.8 million people and around 35% of them are living along the Ishmi River. So actually 35%, let's say, I don't know, let's say 1 million people the maximum, they are polluting this river as you see it in, on this picture. I, I do not want to imagine it, how it could be if there will be 10 or 100 times more people, like the cases are in India or other, other countries. But still, this is enough to pollute the Ishmi River and makes it, it, it one of the most polluted rivers in Albania. And there is an enormous loss of the biodiversity. At least the last 20, last 20 years, there is no more fish or anything living on, this, on these waters because it is extremely polluted. I don't know what can be more extremely polluted if there is nothing living, it smells horribly. And as you see the pictures, and there are also some other, some other pictures, pictures fixed by themselves, but I will stop very short on the right. On the right picture, there is a map, actually it's from the National Environmental Agency in Albania. And the last, I don't know, seven years, they have been doing these reports about the Ishmi River and they have introduced it or explained that it's extremely, basically the pollution is very bad. Unfortunately, this is, this is only what is coming at the moment from the Albanian government. Basically, they, they show it is bad, but nothing else to, to, be, to be done so far. And also in the, in the, at the source of the Ishmi River is a river is a very, very clean. If you see also where I blur it with, uh, with this green dot. And also uh, Professor, uh, Professor Dibra, she also did a study, her, also finished her PhD 2017 and find, find, found out that the, the, there is a very high number of diarrhea in residents along the Ishmi River. The major challenges are lack of waste and sewage infrastructure and management, basically Actually, we are speaking for the capital of Albania with around 1 million people and there is no wastewater treatment plants. So basically 1 million people, whatever they are doing in their daily activities, it's going untreated into, into the Ishmi River. And then there are also other challenges like unclear responsibilities. It's still not clear who has to, to take care for this river. We know that there are environmental engineers, our NGOs or experts or fighters as me in this case, but still it's not enough to to change the face of the Ismi River. And there is also another problem like lack of, lack of awareness on environmental issues. On the right page, there is, this is on the right, uh, there is a map. Also there are registration of more than 200 hotspots done by me. And this is like how the solution looks like. There are around 109 hotspots, waste hotspots, and the rest are sewage, sewage uh, problems, hotspots, like different pictures, different explanation. And as you see, as you see, as you see in this picture, there is, much, really much to do. And sometimes you do not know where to start, but I tried to, to bring it in a point that where could be a, a starting point. At the water analysis, I'm not going to, to go very deep. I only 
only that I will only let you know that the situation is as horrible as, as you see in many parts of the river. It's as polluted as no fish can can live on this on this river. I will stop very short to the dissolved oxygen. There is one area, maybe it seems that in, along the Ishmi River is the most polluted area. The dissolved oxygen oxygen is 1.68 milligram per liter, which is as low as no fish can survive on this on this river. And if you throw if you put into this water two or three fish, they will die within, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes because there is no oxygen, they cannot breathe. And I'm not going to the other points, but if, as, as you see, usually in the beginning of this river, it's, it's very clean. And after it leaves the first houses, it gets extremely polluted from sewage water, from industrial water, from, from waste, and from what I, what, whatever else we are producing in Albania in, Albania in our daily activities. And uh, in 2019, actually, I finished my uh, pro, uh, feasibility study along the Ishmi River. It's called Stopping the Pollution of Ishmi River in Albania. Also, I published it as, as a book. It was like almost one year work and really like eight hours per day, six days a week work. And then I ended up in many results, but I have to explain like two and a half years of my, of my work along the Ishmi River within eight minutes. And I hope I manage it as well as you understand what I what I want to bring at this point. So basically I ended up in five, five project proposals. Basically these are proposals that you have to start right now. There is no time to lose and it's not as complicated as no one can do it. The first project proposal is awareness raising among stakeholders. I'm very convinced that if we are aware, we can pressure each other, we can pressure our government and they will start moving if we need, for example, a wastewater treatment plan. And, but also we'll pressure our community that like do not throw any more waste into the river or find another way for your sewage and not just throw them into the river and so on. The second project is what I suggest and I also have been working so much on the, the second pro project proposal is a municipality cooperation to improve waste collection. And this is, was there was my main focus to stop this 109 hotspots to, of waste and to have like just improving the infrastructure and awareness raising. These were my two, my two fighting points, and uh, it looks like I have there is done a lot of work, but still it's, it's much to do. So I'll go to the third project proposal: reduction of cadmium and and, and uh, lead. This is like cadmium. Cadmium is up to 104 times more than the standard of European Union. Lead is one I don't know. It was like 98 or 100 times more. So it's extremely high to really be very, very dangerous. And you have to start, or I have to start, or the Albanian government or someone else has to start to deal with these heavy metals. As you very well know, maybe better than me, how dangerous are these heavy metals. The next project, the fourth one, is to establish establishment of constructed wetlands. I'll stop in the other slides a bit more. As a traditional sewage treatment methods in rural hotspots. Actually, four fourth and the fifth project's proposal, they go kind of with, with each other because if we build wastewater treatment plants in the municipalities, the villages are so decentralized in Albania that I think it's really impossible to get the sewage water from a village 20 to 25 kilometers to bring it to the capital city of Tirana because of the traffic is so horrible and you need like one hour and the kilometers make their, their own, uh, play their own part, it's expensive. And if we, are, we, if we haven't yet managed to build the wastewater treatment plant, or we are going to manage to, to bring even this wastewater to the, to the main wastewater treatment plants. That's why I was suggesting constructed wetlands as a traditional sewage uh, treatment method in a rural, in a rural, rural area. I'll bring some very short, another example. What I'm doing now, it's a bit like, hey, actually I'm very motivated what I'm doing now. This is my current project. It's focused on four parts. And this, the first part is to reduce the amount of land de detergent. I, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is so much to do to, to do. There are so many projects or so many actions that you, you can take, but I wanted to take an action that I really have to do directly with inhabitants and reducing the amount of land de detergent estimated from, from, from my analysis is like 25 to 35% of the amount. So this is possible. And this we can do with speaking just with, uh, with each other, like reducing the pollution, also reducing the expenses and also making it possible that we are more safe from the allergies that could be caused from the extra use of, of laundry detergents. The second point is to use more ecological detergents like with basis of soap nuts, soap wort or horse chestnuts. I'll mention 
it just in a slide later on. To get rid of a fabric softener, I'm not going to mention it anymore because it's enough of these three pictures. Based also on information from environmental agencies or NGOs in Germany, they kind of find out and they are so convinced that there is no need to use fabric softener. So basically, just get rid of the fabric softener. You have more money in your pocket, you have less, less polluted water, and then you have less possibilities to get allergies from this chemical elements. The first picture it says that like long, uh, the fabric softener come mostly from dead animals. This was the noise that Germany is working a lot. They even did like, I got uh, a link. They did a documentary, like 40, 43 minutes, just about the detergent pollution and also fabric softener and why you do not need, need them. Like the, the, the softener from the fabric softener is coming from fat animals, usually dead animals, at least it's explained from the German environmental experts. And the, the, the smell, the good smell, with so-called good smell, it's coming, it's all chemical. So basically, you do not need to, to use um, a fabric softener. And the fourth point is promote constructed petlands as a viable solution for the villages. Re to reduce the amount of laundry detergents, so I will stop very, very, very short because it's, it's a very long study that I have been doing the last five months, but be aware of the detergent cup, no need to fill it full. Usually the advertisements of the detergents has the interest to fill it full and then you get like 220, 200 to 250 milliliters, ones that you need usually 100 milliliters. So basically you can reduce it more than 50%, but let's say that not everyone is filling it as full as in the picture. And then to also kind of do the, the correct dosing of the deter detergents, also you have to see the instructions of the detergents, uh, like you have to find the water hardness, one of the most important parts to do the detergent dosing is water hardness. So no one knows it in Albania. That's why this is like a kind of my campaign what I'm going to, to bring this, this month in Albania. And then you see, I'm a bit like really brave to present soap nuts as an alternative to my Indian colleagues. <laughs> so be free to, to judge me or to support me. It's just, I thought, and I'm kind of convinced that there are better opportunities, better possibilities than just these chemical detergents or chemical washing detergents. There is soap nuts produced in India, not as good for Albania because you have to, uh, import, uh, to import it and the transport and so on for climate change is not as good, but it's a possibility. And then we have liquid detergents done from horse chestnuts and the soap wort laundry liquid. These two right ones, we are producing them in Albania together with the Agriculture University of Tirana and two chemical professors. And so far we have done some probes and it's going really very interesting that you can really reduce so much from these chemicals and still have a good quality of your, of your clothes, clothes washed. The third point, I'm not an expert of constructed wetlands, but I'm kind of really convinced so far that you cannot treat all the waters in a, in a water, water plant like at the capital city or to, to transport it every day. But you need also in some villages like maybe constructed wetlands is a good possibility. Maybe you, I will find out today even better possibilities how to clean the Ishmi river waters. Leo, I can see only you if I am a bit going too fast or I am running out of time, please give me a sign because yes, I don't see anyone else. I, th I think you have, um, you have a lot, uh, enough time to just um, conclude real quick. And okay, perfect. yes. I'm almost, I'm almost I'll give you one minute to uh, wrap it up. I think I'll, I'll manage it. So constructed wetlands is an artificial wetland to treat municipal or industrial wastewaters. So as you see also in the pictures, no need to go so deep. I think maybe some of you know it's much better than me. What, how can you work with constructed wetlands? Maybe you can even ask or suggest me something on the end. But the question is, this is actually two pictures from my village. We are around 35 families in my village but like these villages are also other villages and these villages or houses are connected to a sewage system, which transports the wastewater to a tank on the, as you see on the picture, and then is dis discharged untreated directly into the river. The question is, how can you deal with that? And on this point, I'm suggesting constructed wetlands. I think it's a good, it's a really a, an acceptable technique to clean these waters because a, a good part of the work is done. We have toilets, thanks God. <laughs> we have, we even have now the sewage system, but we are not treating it. So the point so far is that we are collecting for what? Just to bring it <laughs> in one point instead of every house does it by themselves. 
So this is a question which I think we can answer with constructive wetlands, at least partially. But uh, I wanted to go a bit more than just constructed wetlands to make it a bit more. All right. Okay. Thank you so. Thank you so my, much. My I last, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so much.